Hello everybody and welcome to this, the first episode of the Magically Cruising podcast. I'm, I'm Kieran, I am an independent travel agent and I love nothing more than helping people explore the world, ideally via cruise holidays, but I also love exploring North America and Disney holidays as well. And this is going to be our first episode where we are going to share a little bit more information with you about who we are as the Magically Cruising team and also what this podcast is going to be about if you decide to listen to us in the future as well. So I'm going to introduce my fellow host. So first of all, Sarah, if you'd like to say hello to everybody and introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sarah and I am co-owner and cruise writer at Cruising for All, formerly cruising with kids, but as the kids got older, we cruise with them less and less. So we're now discovering what cruising is like when your kids grow up. I'm also a craft blogger over Extraordinary Chaos and I design craft files. And Donna, well, very much similar to you, actually. So obviously, I'm, I'm part two of Cruising with cruising for All. You call it Cruising with Kids. Actually, we keep doing that, don't we, all the time. And I also wrote, write two other blogs as well. One is a craft, a travel blog, and the other one is London blog. Well, that's a new one, so I'm very similar to Sarah. So that's all about us. Amazing. So I think this is why I think we should probably explain to people why we decided to start a podcast, I guess. Um we come from two different sides of the travel industry. I am a travel agent, you guys are travel writers. So we have kind of a breadth of professional knowledge, but also kind of personal knowledge as well. Um, I think it's quite clear from just the conversations we have with each other that we are big fans of cruise holidays, I guess. Um, and that's kind of what brought us together. I guess we can talk a little bit about, I guess, maybe how we first met. I think that probably is some of that. <laughs> I think a bit of a weird situation, wasn't there, of how we first met and how this kind of came about. Yeah, so what was that? Like, love at first sight. It was a weird one, not it? Little, little River Cruise, didn't we? And we ended up, we went we together every day, or all four of us, didn't we? And just uh, videoing and taking photos and all doing the same nutty stuff that you do when you mm. travel, travel blogging. So, yeah. And all the strength was on a half feel, who I think that's how we first met, was that we came and sat with you because there was no one to sit. Yeah. And I was trying to work out what was gluten-free and obviously because he's gluten-free as well and an expert he he sort of helped me navigate through our first cruise yeah. being gluten-free yeah so that's how we met phil's very much led by his belly so i think the first thing he does is suss out the lay of the land for food so if ever you're on a cruise and phil's on board and you want to know what's good to eat definitely speak to phil um because he's very much led by his belly but yeah that that trip was odd it was a bit of a funny one because we kind of hit it off on the first night as being a bit keen of the cocktails and the drinks menu <laughs> and then without realizing it we just kept visiting the same sites and we just kept bumping into each other over the course of the cruise but by the end of it we were like should we just hang out together <laughs> just make it a bit like <laughs> yeah well uh, when, you know, should mention that was avalon river cruises which mm. i absolutely adored nice fantastic yeah and it was uh, it, it was, was Western Western Danube, wasn't it? Um, yeah, yep. Danube. So it was, it was um, Vienna and Budapest and Austria. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, it was such a lovely voyage to have. Type of thing, just to kind of share it with you guys as well. You guys helped definitely make the voyage, but it was just a lovely sailing as well. And I think. We can talk about River Cruise in depth, I guess, in another episode. But I think for a lot of people who may be kind of at the younger generation as well, think that River Cruising is for older people. Yeah. I think specifically Avalon and Arosa and a few other the River Cruise lines, they're, they're a lot more kind of multi-generational than I think people initially may think. So it's definitely something that we can chat about more, I guess, down the line. I was going to say, I was going to say what, uh, when did we first start cruising? When did you first start cruising? Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's a good place to start off, isn't it, is why we all fall in love with cruise. And for me, it was a bit reluctant, if I'm honest. I had the impression initially that cruising was for old people. Um, so I had no interest, didn't show any interest. I saw all these adverts, I was like, maybe when I'm older. Um, but we were planning our honeymoon back in, God, 2014 this was now, so it's gone back quite a bit. And we were going around in circles for months and months and months about what to do for our honeymoon. And me and Phil, I say more me than Phil, are big Disney fans and we kept coming up with the idea of should we go back to Walt Disney World we kind of go every other year anyway so is it really a honeymoon if we've already been um so we were looking for something different and I kind of come across Disney Cruise Line and I was like ah that could be cool let's give that a go it's obviously not going to be a typical cruise because it's aimed at families it's going to be a bit more fun and we absolutely fell in love um Disney Cruise Line and again we could talk for hours about Disney Cruise Line and what makes them so different to all the other cruise lines they are definitely a niche niche line within the cruise industry um, but they offer a lot. And I think 
just kind of getting that Disney magic, but done in the, the format of a cruise was so, so special. And I remember sort of sailing into their private island in the Caribbean, Castaway Key, and seeing the island come in. I was up at like six in the morning, which is rare for me. Just like a school kid with giddy excitement, kind of seeing the island coming in. And I even done the 5K fun run. It took me an hour to do the 5K fun run, but I did do the 5K fun run because I was so excited and awake. And I was like, let's do it, let's explore. Um, I loved it so much. We booked another one. So we did then a transatlantic with Disney as well. So we did kind of the onboard booking and did a transatlantic. And then still love Disney Cruise Line, but I think that opened the gateway then to kind of there are so many cruise lines out there that you can experience. And each cruise line offers something different and exciting. I think it's created this kind of lust and this excitement for me now to kind of try as many different cruise lines as possible and find the one that I love just as much as Disney, but for different reasons, I guess. You, Sarah? I've not tried this yet. Um, me, uh, I jumped right in at the deep end. So Joe, our youngest, was only one. And we travelled when he was six months old. And just had... We had a fab holiday, but we had a horrendous time with him. It was just really difficult managing him in a land-based hotel around a pool. It was just really hard. So I just found this amazing deal with Princess on the old Sea Princess... But it was transatlantic. I mean, who does that for the first cruise? I'm just saying the deep end. I was transatlantic for your first voyage. You know what? It was amazing. And I mean, well, it was back in the days where you could negotiate if they could go in the pool. I mean, it would never be allowed now, but they did allow him to go in the pool. There was only two babies on the whole trip. And we'd, we met friends. There was people and there were children. And it, it was multi-generational because Chris's parents came and their friends and we had such an amazing time that we literally booked our next cruise the week we got off and we've never looked back since. I just adore cruising and waking up somewhere new every day. Um I don't I don't think I've got a particularly loyal to, to a particular brand. I love Princess because they were my first. I love Royal Caribbean. Just been on NCL, so I don't think I've got I like to try them all. I like to try every ship and see what all the lines have to offer. Donna, what about you? Um, well, we we didn't choose it actually. It was that we was going away with friends to um, uh, Baham- Bahamas, no Barbados. Sorry, got that wrong. And we tapped on a little four day on the Independence of the Seas, and it was just after it'd been launched. So, I think it was late two thousand and eight or middle two thousand and eight. Um, mm-hmm. So Harry was three, so they were little, and we loved it because we could just they love kids clubs, so we would put them in the kids club and we'd go and then they wouldn't want to come out so we would we'd be in the casino and we'd be in the bars and and we'd go back and they'd go no we want to stay in we want to play gargoyle ball so for us it was about the time we'd had a holiday um with the kids mm. at all um so do you remember, sorry do you remember the cruise we went on and we couldn't get the kids out of the kids club that was your second cruise i think i think and we, we used to, have to negotiate to get them out I they wouldn't come out. <laughs> 12, 12 and 2 in the morning, you had to pay um, per half an hour. You had to pay dollars for it. Um, but it was up to, but they never wanted to come out. So we had paid every night for so this extra two hours in the club. Um, and then after that, we we just had a real run on Royal Caribbean, so much so that we're, I think we're Diamond Plus. Yeah, or we're, we're just nearly at Diamond Plus. We've got one more cruise to go. Uh, so we've done loads of Royal. And now we've branched out a bit more to MSC, because obviously we're Diamond on MSC now. Um, And now we're looking at maybe trying some other sort of different ones. We've done the River Cruise, so... But, yeah, we we love it now. But our kids are older now, so go on our own. (laughs) What I I think it's an interesting you say, though, about sailing with kids and without kids, because we don't have kids. We're a gay couple. We don't... I think a lot of people say to us as well, like, why did you choose Disney for your first cruise line? They're a family line. And... I think it's because of what you just said, though, as well. For us, we, we you get the adult-only areas on their, their ships, and we kind of lived in them, and we were not bombarded by kids the entire time, and we were spoiled rotten because of Disney's kind of um, guest service level. But also, as you say, we hardly saw the kids because they're so well looked after on cruise lines that we they, 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 there is a good kind of chance for the adults as well. And I think I can only speak for Disney's experience on that front, but they know who's paying the bill in my opinion so they know that it's the parents who are paying the bill so if the parents are having a great time and they're enjoying them times as well and they get time to kind of unwind and relax um because the kids are so entertained with all the kids clubs and all the activities as well then the parents are going to have an equally amazing holiday and want to go back again because 
it's not just about the kids either, is it? Or it's not just about the adults. There's something on a lot of these ships nowadays that have something for everyone. I find that with uh, Royal Caribbean are amazing at that. They channel the kids so that, and and also last week when we were on a Norwegian cruise line, um, there there were lots. I mean, it wasn't half term, so but there were quite a few kids on, and we didn't notice them at all because yeah. they're just channeled correctly, so that everybody's got their own groove in the ship, and it really works. If if a ship gets it right, then it's just it works so well. Because I mean, you, obviously, you get the people that don't want to travel with children, and we travelled in a big group last week that there were no children with us. We all, we all left like older children at home. Um, yeah. It wasn't a problem at all. I was quite pleasantly surprised actually and you do but you do hear a lot of people say now oh um we, one of us goes back to the room when they're going to sleep and i'm thinking oh, i don't know i've ever done that that does not make me a bad parent <laughs> <laughs> i think that'd be a good podcast actually what did you do with your children on the cruise ship <laughs> yeah ours never went to sleep they were up with us till till the death it was uh they love it they loved cruising yeah they love it absolutely love it the one thing I notice, and when I speak to people who are booking cruises, is that I think they love the fact that the kids have such a great time as well. And they make these memories, they make these friendships as well. And I think the fact that the ship is a bit of a bubble, um, the kids have a, a degree of independence maybe that they wouldn't normally get, I guess, on um, a land-based holiday, I guess, where they kind of have to um, keep close to family. I know everyone has a different comfort level with how much they're willing to kind of let their kids free explore, but... I've seen kids on ships kind of go around together in groups and they're kind of going from venue to venue and experiencing the ship themselves. Do you think as parents who've sailed with kids, like that's again a real good perk of traveling on a cruise ship is allowing the kids to kind of have their own well, that, holiday at their own pace as well? I was always made friends with other people day one. Because they, and that's really quite important when you go on a cruise ship is to get them up. If they're going to go in the kids' clubs, get them in there on day one when they when all the different kids start making their friendships. Because then, you know, they've got always got someone to go with. I mean, not that we forced them to go into the kids' clubs, but we knew that they would just enjoy themselves. They wouldn't be going, oh, mum, I'm bored, or mum. So, and they loved it. And, and then as they got older in teens, that was the first place they would go. He's right, let's go and see who's in the kids' club and or what nationality they are or um, things like that. So that was all really good. I mean, there's a fine line, though, because, I mean, we once did one cruise on, it was one particular line who were excellent but they just they, didn't, they took too many kids on this one cruise and they were running riot yeah. absolutely running now i'd feel like they were my yeah and i and if i thought they were acting well they wouldn't I, because I'm like, i know where they are all the time and i think there's that fine line of you know they're my kids and i love them but nobody else is forced to so i think there's i think True. and that's why you need a ship that's got activities that keeps them busy so that they're not going up and down in the lifts and stuff like that. I mean, I've only seen that twice on a cruise, uh, but it's quite irritating. Yeah, and that's as a matter. We, we, I've got to say, we say this quite a lot within kind of the travel agents, and I think Clear as well. For those that don't know, Clear is the Cruise Line International Association. They kind of instill it in us as travel agents to work really closely with your customers to kind of find the right ship for them. Because as you just said, if you put the wrong people on the wrong ship, and it maybe doesn't have the entertainment that they're looking for or the activities they're looking for it could put them off cruise forever and what any cruise it can be a bit like marmite you know my personal favorite cruise line is virgin voyages and i swear by them now but i know for other people if i put them on them they would actually have the worst time ever because they kind of tried to disrupt what a, tip, a typical cruise is and some people love that traditional cruise experience mm -hmm. Um, and that may not be good for families either because they're very much catered towards the kind of more mature crowd and there's very little kind of kids activities. So I do think it is important that people do do a lot of research to kind of find the right ship for them, whether they're going as a couple, whether they're a honeymooner, first timer, their 20th cruise. There's a lot of different ways to experience cruise. It's not kind of the cookie cutter copy and print thing that people see and go, that is a cruise type of thing. I think they'll be surprised by just how much variety there is within the cruise industry. Well, like, we've got friends that um, will only cruise on Celebrity and they, they've got a daughter the same age as one of our boys. But she's really quiet and she would be so overwhelmed by a big, crazy ship with slides and waterfalls yeah. and all. She so, But the, for them, they like the fact that that's tranquil and they, they want to spend time together as a family. And they're saying that. I mean, our last Royal Caribbean cruise, we thought, 
they're older now, the boys. And we thought, yay, we went on the old days where, we, you know, we, we'd go in the casino at night and when they were little, when they were going in the clubs. And they were like two Olympics this time. They just wanted, which was amazing. <laughs> no, they were like, no, we'll come with you. To, come, we'll go into the quiz. Um, but we had a really good time together. So, you know, they're adults now and young adults. And it, it was great to spend time to, together and still have stuff to do. They wouldn't yeah. do the activities that I had to do the surfing to video it for TikTok, didn't I, Donna? Did you? Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Been on the wave rider. <laughs> you can't be sitting there. I wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> you got this excuse. <laughs> Talk about your last cruise. Oh, 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 actually, why Why did you book your last cruise? Kieran. Who wants to go first? Me. So my last cruise, oh, my last cruise that I, oh, I've done quite a lot last year, so it's difficult for me to kind of say, but... The last cruise that I chose anyway was Virgin Voyages again. Um, we're getting a bit addicted to them, to be honest, to the point that they're actually referring to us as part of the crew because we're on board so much at the moment. Um, for us, I think it was a mixture of, it of itinerary and the ship. Um, we love the fact that Virgin Voyages is adult only. Not that I don't like kids, but I have chose not to have them, so I don't want to see them when I'm on holiday. Um, but it's just a case of as well, we were going to um, ports I've never been to before. And it was to kind of a part of the world. So we did um, a JCO. We did Corsica. Um, it was kind of some of the more smaller ports that I've never sailed before. I've kind of done more of the mainstream ports. So it was really cool to kind of go off the beaten path. It turned out, however, that we didn't actually get off the ship that much because we were so exhausted by the end of the year because we just did it last October that we pretty much spent most of the time on the ship, which we are really bad for not doing. We're kind of a big person of like, you go into these ports, this is your one chance to kind of get off the ship and explore. So... We did spend a lot of that sailing kind of wrestling the guilt of we're in these beautiful places and I've been to Italy before. We really should get off and explore. But we ended up spending it all the time apart from two ports on the ship because we were just so exhausted. And I think it's that difficult thing, isn't it, with cruising to kind of reconcile should you get off and explore or is the ship the destination as well? So for us, it was we pick Virgin because the ship is the destination. It's a beautiful ship to kind of relax in, but she does go to some incredible places as well. Um, and we did wrestle with a lot of guilt that voyage. Still now, when I'm writing back kind of the, the trip reports on it, I still struggle when I'm like, we didn't really get off and explore half the ports. We kind of went off for an hour or two and we're like, let's go back, shall we? It's a tough one, isn't it, to kind of know when to relax and how much to explore. And not only that, you sometimes, I mean, we don't know because I can't imagine if it were, so I'd rather be on a cruise. And But if you went to an all-inclusive resort for a week, you don't feel pressured to go out, do you? No, so I shouldn't feel the pressure. I think there's so much on a ship that you've got the choice, and that's the great thing about it. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, it's a funny one. I've never done all inclusive, all, an all inclusive holiday until I cruised, just because it never. And this is the irony about kind of the crew, the perception of cruise as well. We just we're not the type of people that would go to a resort like you say. We love kind of either city breaks or we do love doing a bit of exploring and going out and seeing new things. I think it's why cruise resonated with us so much the fact that you could do that you can kind of stay in this really gorgeous resort and have all the entertainment all the perks of being in a resort but she rocks up to a new place every day so you can explore kind of either mainstream ports like you know Barcelona and all the bigger ports that ships go to or if you're lucky enough to sail on one of the smaller ships that goes to kind of off the beaten path ports which I think is what you've been doing a lot more of, Donna lately, isn't it? You've been picking smaller ships to kind of yeah, do I mean, the we've, next travel ports. We've done, obviously, it was on Symphony on the inaugural, but, and because we wanted to have that big, big ship. And I love them. Um, but now, especially as we haven't got the kids, we are literally looking at where we're going to be, um, what's what's sailing out of this port, um, what ship is it, have a bit of that ship. Um, it, it, so our last one, we literally chose it based on the itinerary, and it was the smallest MSC ship, the Lyrica. Um, it didn't have all the bells and whistles that obviously, like your Royal Caribbean Symphony of Caesars got, but it did some really lovely little pearl ports that you can't get to on the bigger ships. Um, it was flying out of our county. We were in our county at the time, so it was a short taxi ride into the port, and it just perfect really and it was 10 days and we haven't done a 10 day cruise for a long time so mm -hmm. i got my sea legs back <laughs> it was good it was really good it was interesting what about you i did the small ship what about you sarah why what was your last cruise we know what it is but why did you tell everybody what your last cruise was and kind of what made you decide to do that one so my last cruise was it was just my husband and i and six friends so that's the first time we've done that 
as since the boys have been older, we went over to the Caribbean, spent a bit of time in well, two days in Miami, then cruised on Norwegian Encore around the Caribbean. So the reason that I chose Encore was because we were on the inaugural, Donna and I, and I just it blew me away the ship. That there's so much on it, but it's so classy as well. So you it's almost like a a multi-level ship because upstairs is all singing and dancing and as soon as you go inside everything's calm mm. and so it obviously that's a big ship not as big as some of the royal ships but we had a great time it was busy it was at full capacity uh the pool was if you if sitting around the pool is important to you then i'd say it was quite busy but then peter some people love that but we just sat up on that we found decks because it's such a big ship there was always somewhere to sit and we had a great time we it was really really relaxing and i'd definitely do it again i don't but i'm the same as donna now i just want to try every shift i want to try as well because we, we write about cruise you, you obviously always need that new thing so doing the same old again and again yeah. heals to me less so i think as well the more the more ships you try and the more brands you try as well i think you get a better appreciation of what it is you personally like as well you know i've been very fortunate to do i think it was like 12 cruises last year um and it gave me a real good insight into kind of what matters to me personally when I choose a cruise and also then to kind of recommend to people what maybe they would like as well. Um, I know, like, I, I guess that's a good quick little topic as well for us. And we'll talk more about this as kind of the series goes on. But personally, what is it you prioritize with the, what type of cruise are you, I guess? Um, I guess like for me to explain that, I guess I am very much a resort style ship. I like the new, more contemporary ships. Um, definitely the newer, the better for me. I like kind of... Um, the more um, feature-packed ships as well. So kind of the ships I love. I'm drawn to ships that have slides, they have water parks, they have all that type of stuff. Even if I'm not using them, I just like feeling like I'm on a ship that has a lot of the more modern amenities, kind of really high-tech ships where you control things with your app. Things like that really resonate well with me. Not that I don't appreciate and love the smaller traditional ships, but I'm like a magpie. If a ship's sticking something new on it, like Icon of the Seas, if they could stick anything more on it, I'd be happier. <laughs> you know, like I love all the high-tech shows, all that type of stuff. That's the type of cruiser I am. So if I was choosing to sail, that's what I would more gravitate towards, I guess, is a quick one for each of us about kind of what is it for you if you had to pick your ideal sailing, what it, what would it be or what type of brand? I'm pretty much, um, I would say, a bit of a classic cruiser. Um, I like to just have a nice meal in the evening, maybe see a bit of entertainment, spend some time in the bar, do a few quizzes, um, and and I love city breaks. So for me, hopping off in a different port each day, making the most of that is is what I like to do. Um, I even when I've been on big ships, probably because I'm not that um, I don't know uh, what's the word um, adventurous. Um, I mean, I have tried the rock wall. I've done that. I, I would not, you would not get me on doing no blooming, what do you call it? Bloody ball, do you know? Well, no. Me rider. <laughs> no. Do you know what? I would always claim that if it was on there. <laughs> so I'm quite a bad at cruise. I just sort of pass champagne, watch a little bit of that. But it doesn't mean to say, I, I, I intend, I like all the ships. But the more blingy, the more um, diamonds and the diamantes, the better. <laughs> No. You're quite used to... I'm a big fan of the Swarovski stairs then. Um, <laughs> <I love it. laughs> the first time I didn't even know that the um the Fantasia uh, has got um gold in the yacht club rather than the really. I was like, oh my god, they're gold. They're gold. I was like fascinated by it. All of the others aren't. That's the only only ship that's got the uh, gold. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's interested. What about you, Sarah? What, um, I think. Really not- oh. I mean, I say that I want to try them all, but if if I'm searching for a cruise, I look at Royal first. I, I love, I just love the atmosphere of Royal Caribbean. There's 28 ships, so I can try them all, can't I? Is that right? 28 or the new ones? I already eight. I've lost count. This is my new ship every other month with them, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. 28 with, oh, if you can't, Utopia and Icon. Yeah. Mm. Yes, um, that makes sense. But they no, I like to I like to try the activities. I mean, last week I wanted you know they they've got a slide that drops off the side oh. of the ship one on board, and I was gutted I couldn't go on that. But you can't have any oh, plastic. Then I had plastic in my bra strap on bikini, so I couldn't go on. Wow. Um, so I like to try all the activities and 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 do everything on the ship. But then I like to go off and explore as well. But I don't want to go on a full day trip. I want to wander, take my camera. So 
I'm pretty flexible, really. I just I prefer sun if I had a choice. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Too. But but then saying that we did Norwegian fields last year, and that was incredible. Yeah. I just think as long as I'm on the ship, I'm happy. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's the thing, isn't it? Of, I don't. I'm a big advocate of saying there's no bad cruise. Um, there's a bad cruise for you personally. Like you know, you could put on this ship and be like, this ship has no appeal to me personally. But I think every single brand, every single itinerary sailing has something for someone. It's just a case of finding that right thing. And you know, we've just briefly chatted about some quick fire topics about kind of just the top level of what cruise is about but i think over the course of this podcast i'm hoping we can kind of dive into one of these topics in a bit more detail and just kind of chat about i guess in detail from our perspective and experience of kind of what all these different things mean like you say uh, what is it like to do a norwegian fjords cruise and should you prioritize the ship or should you prioritize the itinerary uh, these are all things i think people need to consider when they are planning their cruises in the future and they definitely depends what itinerary you're on as to whether you prioritize the ship or the itinerary and try a new stuff because I'm dying to try. What's that cruise line? You've got to be fifty to go on. Saga. Yeah, and I, I've just hit fifty, and I really want to go on it. <laughs> and the is, oh God, we're not going on. And I was like, yeah, no, you, the ship's really swanky. You've got to see it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's like such. I don't know anyone because it's such a beautiful ship, as you say. The service is amazing, but trying to sell it to seven customers, they're very, very offended by the word saga. So I had a customer who had to. I had to call it Agas. Because <laughs> she wouldn't let me call it side. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, no. no, I really <laughs> want to that. <laughs> so I guess I hope that's been really interesting to you as a starting off point. I thought it'd be really important that we kind of just introduce ourselves, say hello, and just introduce a little bit more about our personal cruise experience so you get a feel for the type of cruises we are personally so you can kind of see what we have to offer when we chat about cruise. Um, what we're going to do over the course of the next couple of weeks now, we'll be sharing new episodes and we're going to talk about different topics. So some of the topics could be um, a deep dive into a cruise region or a particular ship. We'll also be talking about kind of different topics of whether you should maybe look at um, a small cruise, a short cruise or a longer cruise, different topics like that. If you've got topics you want us to chat us about as well, by all means, let us know on social media. We'll share our details in a minute of where you can find us all. We'd love to know what you'd love for us to talk about as well. Um, so if you'd like to find me, my name is Kieran. I am the Magical Traveller. You can find me on pretty much everything under Magical T-R-V-L-R. And then Sarah, if you want to tell the guys how they can find you online as well. So you can find me at Cruising for All or Cruising with Kids because they both come up in Google. We still do have a Facebook group, actually, can I mention, for families cruising with kids. So we still very much talk about families, even though we're exploring without on our own. And you can also find me at extraordinarychaos.com if you are a crafter. And Donna? Same here. So over at Cruising for All um, and Cruising with Kids and my personal one, which is like lovedo.com. Awesome. Thanks, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. And we'll start on the next episode. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.